Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Are you one of those folks that likes to get a jump on holiday cards? You know who you are. Today I've got a really fun pair of holiday card projects that are very simple. I think they would be really easy to mass produce and well, they feature some new stamps from me. It's a win-win. I love these cards though, because they feature gold embossing powder, classic simplicity. Stick around to see my pair of holiday card projects coming up next. So here's a look at the products I'll be using today, starting with this lovely cling stamp called Ornamental. Now this is one of the wonderful red cling stamps with this ornamental pattern that sort of is staggered flowing down the card. It would look good coming from the top. It would look cool coming from the side. And this stamp set, this or this big cling, coordinates with ornamental Christmas. So this just has a bunch of wonderful, simple Christmas greetings, right? And it also has ornaments from that, the string of ornament type things from this set. And there are dies, coordinating dies that are purchased separately, of course, that can cut out almost everything in the set. So lots that can be done with this. Today, I'm gonna keep it very simple. I've got a little embossing ink and some of my favorite ultra fine antique gold embossing powder from Simon's Stamp. I have some schoolhouse red ink and one of my Simon or my Simon blending brushes. And I'm going to start with some schoolhouse red cardstock. And we're going to get started with stamping and then I'm going to see what shakes out. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is grab my Misty tool and take my insert out. Now I like to tape my insert into the Misty. It holds it nice and steady when I'm stamping. But when I'm using red cling stamps, the red rubber, I like to take it off the backer and just put it right inside the Misty because I like to press into my stamp and not the other way around. So what I wanna do here is I really do want to take advantage. Well, you know what? I may actually have to do it this way after all because I want that staggered edge on my cardstock. I want this to come about, oh, maybe right about there, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna grab my purple tape. I'm gonna take a piece of purple tape like this, double it back, find about the center, right? right about there. Actually, you know what, sometimes I'm gonna do two pieces. I could do this with repositionable adhesive as well. Whatever you have on hand, because the whole idea is just to have a couple pieces of tape that are gonna hold your paper onto the misty door, right? I always just kind of go on the side of my hand. And now what I'm going to do is powder up with embossing magic, remove all the static and oil so that when I stamp my clear embossing powder, or <laughs> you know what, mama can't speak. You know what I mean. When I do the powder, so that when I stamp my clear embossing ink, the powder that I'm going to use is only going to stick right where I stamped. Now I don't really have to ink up the whole stamp. I just have to make sure I get to that line. So I'll just focus my embossing ink here in that area like that. And now I'm going to bring my paper over. I'm going to grab my stamp press, my Debbie tool. This just helps me to apply even pressure over the misty door in a way that does not hurt my wrists. And I'll pick this up. The nice thing about the red stamps, they don't stick to your cardstock the same way that photopolymer does. So I'm just going to ink this up a little bit more but that looks like a fantastic impression for right out of the gate. And I'll go ahead and press. Now I'm gonna lift this up right like this. That stayed on, that's fine. I'll worry about you later. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on the red cardstock. I do think this is such a classically fun, traditional combo, right? To have a really deep red. Schoolhouse red is a gorgeous, gorgeous color of cardstock. It's very deep, very rich. 
that looks pretty good. Now here's the thing, I am going to dust off any areas where extra powder stuck. And get that out of the way. Like that. Can you see that right there? I'm just going to brush and blow. I almost said blush and blow. Blush and bro. Hey, bro. Um, I think that's good. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, there's a little place that's a little matte. I'm gonna melt that. Whenever you finish, just kind of tilt it in the light. And if you see any area that looks a little matte, you know that you didn't quite get the powder, but look at that, isn't that cool? Got the shine. All right, I'll let that cool for a second. So next, I'm going to bring in my Schoolhouse Red, and I've just grabbed my little, I think this is from my, my Tim Holtz uh, media mat. Uh, I keep it separately, and sometimes it's nice just to kind of have it here where I can do some ink blending. And I'm going to put my pad here right onto my Positively Everything tool, which basically holds this in place. Usually before I start, I'll just run it over a paper towel to get most of the color off, but these brushes are wonderful for this. So let's load it up like that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring in a little of the Schoolhouse Red around the edge of this. Now I am basically doing an emboss resist with a tone on tone effect, right? You can kind of see that coming in. So it's just going to be kind of darkened and pretty over this. And then I'll wipe away the extra powder, right? I think this is cool. I've never done this with the schoolhouse red, but it is a gorgeous, look at that. Look at how, how much depth that is adding. And now I'll take a clean paper towel, right? And just wipe away over where I embossed, kind of wipe this away too. Cause what I can do, see how that just adds a little bit of shadow there. Another thing you can do, and I have been doing this a lot more lately, take a little ultra clean here. And not only, I'm gonna put this off to the side, not only can you really quickly use it for cleaning up a mat that you're working on, look at that. Just cleans it up like there's nobody's business or tomorrow or there's no tomorrow. But the other thing I like to do, and I learned this from my friend Daniel, is you're gonna spray a little Ultra Clean right onto your, well, you can even pick it up this way, right on the mat. And then you can just go lightly over the embossing. You don't wanna press really too hard, right? Because you just wanna clean it off anywhere that it hit on top of your embossing. And look at that, isn't that pretty? I don't know what happened there, I think uh, I got some well, I got some ink on there. I'm gonna let this dry completely, well, for a couple seconds, and then I'm going to go ahead and die cut a panel. Now I'm gonna figure out the crop that I want, right? And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crop off the bottom and top there. Tape this into place like that. And I will run that through my die cut machine to get my nice cropped panel. All right, cut that out like that. I think I need to get my adhesive eraser because I pressed a little paper into the panel. <laughs> you can see I have my pretty embossed panel with a little bit of shade in there. Shading. <laughs> okay, now it's time to move on to the greeting. For the greeting, I think what I want to do here is I want to take the peace, love, and joy to you this holiday season. And I'm going to stamp it also emboss it in gold. I usually only show the one Misty and actually, you know what, while I'm here, I'm also gonna cut up Joy to the World. 
you know, you can always do multiples, right? If you do multiples at once, then you have, you know, something to play around with if you, if you mess up. And in fact, what if I did it, get it a little closer like that? Perfect. Now let's pick up these two greetings, reposition. I, I, as I was saying, I like to show just the original Misty because I, when I started making cards in 2017, I had just the break mini Misty. That was all I had. And I was so obsessed. I, you know, I, I didn't realize that I could stamp and it was a joyous thing. But what I didn't realize is if you're just going to get one, the, the original size is a fantastic investment because you can do more things with it. And it's, it's like, if you're only getting one, go for the original. I like having extras, especially around the holidays, which were, you know, we're nowhere near Christmas. I get it. But for Christmas cards and production line stamping, having an extra Misty, it really is kind of cool. But that, you know, it's, is it extravagant? Well, I mean, yeah, a little. Okay. I've got the embossing ink on here. I'm going to press this down and I'll grab my tool and let that ink transfer, right? The little pressing tool works the same on any Misty, so that's a good thing. Let's see how that looks on the paper. I think I got the P a little heavy there, but let's let's do Joy to the World another time. Oh, what the heck? I'll just I'll just put more pressure on Joy to the World. Just let that transfer. And now I'm going to get the same gold powder. Grab this for the gold on red look. I did powder this up a lot more too, so the powder should slide off a little easier. Yeah, that looks good. You know, some card stocks, I, I find some card stocks are a little toothier than others. And all that means is they might have a bit more texture to them. Even when you think you can't see the texture, some are smoother than others. And I think the ones that have that little extra tooth to them grab powder uh, more so than the super smooth card stocks. course I really do I'm a little biased because I designed this set but I love that simple topography I've taped the coordinating dies into place and I'll go ahead and run that through my Gemini junior just over my shoulder all right I cut them out so well look at that love it so as I started playing with this initially I thought oh I'm gonna do something something like that but that isn't working at all for me and instead what I think I want to do is take this uh, craft card base. It's actually the Nina Storm Desert. I don't know what it's called off the top of my head, the Nina. And put that at the bottom. I think that is a really elegant card. So let me get my score buddy. And we'll just go like this. All right? It'll be a landscape orientation. Do you ever come out of your craft room or your craft corner or wherever it is that you make stuff and you realize there's things stuck to you? It happens to me a lot with purple tape. Sometimes though, I'll just pick it off like that and use it to hold the card base closed. So I think what I'm gonna do is grab some foam tape. This is how I like to do it. I just hold it over the panel and I just cut straight down pop that there. That. Okay, that should be great. I actually think a card like this would be a very easy card to mass produce. I don't even know if the ink blending on top was that needed. Do you know what I mean? You could, look at that though, look at that beautiful. There's something about craft colored bases for the holidays. Just feel very earthy to me. I think it's because Personally, I love to send, um, or I love to wrap my gifts in, I have a big ginormous roll of craft and uh, I love it. I love wrapping in craft and de de decorating with pretty ribbons, you know, and things that add color that are not part of the actual wrapping. So here, let's just add a little piece of foam square there. And I get it, oh, maybe I should trim it just a tiny bit. I don't want you to see it from the edge there. I think that's good. Easy peasy and breezy. Let's pop this on. Funny, funny side story. As I'm 
creating this card, it's like 90 degrees <laughs> where I live in Minnesota. Feels nothing like the holidays, right? But here, I'm just going to put this in the corner. Oh, I kind of love that. I love the simple offset, right? Right there. I think that's nice and straight. Look how simple that is. I love this card. Of course, you've got this gorgeous shine on here. And if we, there we go. Can you see that? So shiny with the gold. All right, but I think I should do something with this, right? Because I've got this extra piece. So let me brainstorm on this one. Second card, it's gonna be a, what is it called? A side fold, but here, here's what I did. I did the exact same thing, right? I went right ahead here and you know what though? There's something shiny on here. I'm gonna I'll just wipe that off. If you ever have anything mucky on a card after it goes through, just use the, uh, use an adhesive eraser. It's really, it's one of those unsung heroes in the craft room of any house, in the craft corner of any place you create. So let's do this. We may, oh, yeah, it opens that way, right? Get it lined up. I always just look at the top sides first and press. Again, loving that craft. Now on this one, I didn't do any ink blending because I kind of wanted to see how cute is that if we just, we could pop it there or we could pop this right in the center because this is a seven line greeting. I don't think that's what we're gonna do. That is so cute. Okay. I am gonna grab a little bit of my connect glue here just to give a little, little wiggle room before it commits. Line it up right so that you, to you is in the center. And if we press that down like that. Did I get it crooked? I think that is great. And that is the second card. Let me grab the other one here and I'll show you the difference here with the shading. I don't know. I think the shading definitely adds um, some depth. I just kind of wanted to see what the difference was between the two. But isn't that just a fun, I mean, this is essentially a clean and simple design. Embossing powder, cardstock, stamps and dies, right? So simple. And I think something like this would be so easy to mass produce. Thanks so much for watching today. I will have all of the supplies I used in today's video linked below in the information box. I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.